Good evening, people. Lonnie, real alcoholic. Hey, guys, I want y'all to go to the story. He sold himself short. Okay, I'm in the third edition, so it's page 293. Um, but go towards the end of the story in your fourth edition, and you'll see these um, these six steps that the Oxford group use. In the beginning of um, our step work, we read this right here, okay? Where Dr. Bob led this guy through the steps. All right, he goes on to tell his story, man. He gets sober, okay? And after a few months, uh, after I made his original trip to Akron, I was feeling pretty cocky. I didn't think my wife was treating me with proper respect. <laughs> now that I was an outstanding citizen. So I set out to get drunk deliberately, just to teach her what she was missing. A week later, I had to get an old friend from Akron to spend two days sobering me up. That was my lesson. Now here's his lesson, people. That one could not take the moral inventory and then file it away. That the alcoholic has to continue to take inventory every day if he expects to get well and stay well. That was my only slip. It taught me a valuable lesson. And I want to bring that up, man. Let's get back into this step 11. <clears throat> Let's go back. Uh, Y'all hear me say it all the time. Pages 84 to 88. Okay. 84. We're doing our step 10, man. We're continuing to take a personal inventory throughout our day. All right, this is showing us that the steps we've already learned, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we're about to learn more about how to help others, okay? Um, these previous steps, we are going to practice those every day. We get into step 11. It's going to give us some definite and valuable suggestions, okay, on our prayer and meditation. How do we enlarge our spiritual life? We saw it through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. So when we retire at night, here's what we're going to do every night. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? All right, there's my fourth step. I got the pattern. I got the five columns. Who, why, what instincts were threatened. I do the sick man's prayer in the fourth column. And I look for my character defect. My pride, my envy, my greed, my laziness, my impatience, my anger, uh, my self-pity, my self-delusion, my self-seeking. Um, the list goes on, right? Okay, so we review our day. That's starting... That's starting from when we woke up. We're going to review our day. We're going to do an inventory on it. Some people write this down for a time. Um, me here lately, I haven't had to write it down in a while. Uh, most of it can be mental. It just becomes a working part of the mind. But for those new to it, my sponsees, I really suggest... Real simple, five columns, okay? So we're going to do our step for us. It says, do we owe an apology, all right? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? That's our step five. Were we kind and loving toward all? Okay, now here's a question. That's kind of our step three, man. Were we kind and loving toward all? On this one here, man, I like to pick out some assets, right? Because um, we do, we, we want to recognize, man, there was a little bit of humility there when that happened. Yep, yep, I, I did. I gained a little patience. Uh, 
Yeah, man, I kept my mouth shut. Instead of getting angry, I didn't say anything. Um, man, we can find some good things we did throughout the day. And so we, we be sure we want to include those too, okay? I like to look at my character defects first, and then I'll get into was I kind and loving toward all in this little inventory on a good note with some gratitude for some assets that I had the strength to actually do. Okay, my step six and seven. What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Was I doing step 12? Was I thinking of what I could do for others, of what I could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness. We'll do a step six and seven. And inquire what corrective measures should be taken. That's our nightly inventory, people. That's our nightly meditation, according to the big book Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous could care less what other type of readings, what other type of meditations, what other type of concentrations, what other type of <coughs> physical poses a person needs to take. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous is not concerned with that. What they're concerned about is am I taking an inventory at night? If I need to talk to somebody, am I talking to somebody about this issue I had today? Do I owe an apology? And have I made that apology? Have, have I made amends for something I did wrong today? And I want to end it on a good note. My character assets. To be thankful for the strength. To avoid search, certain situations. To do the right thing. And on my mistakes that I did make. I'm going to ask God, what could I have done better? Maybe the next time I could do this. Maybe the next time I could do that. And I ask God for the strength to do that. And it's that simple. That is our nightly review. They gave us a definite and valuable suggestion. We are going to do a nightly inventory. All right, on awakening, we're going to think about the 24 hours ahead. Yes, we are going to think. We are not trying to get thoughtless. We are not trying to find the thought in between the thought, between the thought. Okay, we are going to think about the 24 hours ahead. And we're going to consider our plans for the day. <clears throat> Now, before we start doing this, we're going to ask God to direct our thinking that we be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, self-seeking motives. Okay, in planning our day, we're going to say a little prayer. We're going to ask God to direct our thinking. I do a step three. I am, I am, I am firmly convinced of the simplicity of this program. I do a slow, concentrated thinking about a step three. To be divorced from, from, from my ego, my self-will. And remind myself that I am not running the show. <clears throat> I gave that up almost four years ago. And your prayer, your prayer is on you. Okay? It really is. Alcoholics Anonymous has no beef what a person does in this prayer asking to be divorced from our character defects. So I've done that. Okay, I've said my prayer. Under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. For after all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. Now, once again, guys, we're thinking about our 24 hours ahead. It tells us our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane. When I'm cleared of my character defects, my wrong motives, okay? So I consider my plan for the next 24 hours. Now, in doing that, 
In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought or decision. We relax and we take it easy. My favorite part. We don't struggle. We're often surprised how the right answers come after we have tried this for a while. Now, this is just in thinking about our day, guys. There may be something I'm thinking about what, what I need to do today, and there might be something at 10 o'clock. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle this situation. What do I do? I relax and take it easy. In thinking about my day, I'm going to relax. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to ask God for an intuitive thought of what I should do when or if this situation arises. And now I got a plan. Okay, what used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact, it is not probable we are going to be inspired at all times. We might pay for this presumption in all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. All right, letting us know. Right off the bat, we have just scratched the surface in, of this conscious contact with God. We've just scratched the surface of God removing these character defects. Okay? We are not going to be inspired at all times. But the more we practice, this is why we practice what the book's telling us to do. The more we practice, it says, nevertheless... We will find that our thinking, man, once again, we're thinking now. This is not, this is not a program of no thought. This is not a program of ignore your, your, your thoughts. It's not a program of let your thoughts pass, right? Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. So eventually, the more we practice this, in just thinking about our day, the more we practice this, we will get these uh, intuitive thoughts, these hunches, these gut feelings. We come to rely upon those. The more we listen to those, the more we get experience with those, we'll be able to determine the difference between our will and and God's will. It doesn't happen overnight. And we might pay for some of these uh, inspirations and these hunches and these gut feelings until we learn. But we do. It, it planes out, man. We come to rely upon this. So now, <clears throat> we usually conclude the period of meditation with a prayer that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be. Okay, so we're going to conclude the period of meditation. They just told us how to meditate. We open a prayer that, that our, our thinking would be cleared of wrong motives. Okay, we think about our 24 hours ahead. That's our meditation. None of those other things that, that we try to push on people for meditation. If a person does this, okay, and we'll get into that, wants to do these other things, that's great. That's fantastic. It's beautiful. But we will, upon awakening, do this, okay? So we're going to conclude this period of meditation with a prayer. And that we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems. We anticipate some problems when thinking of our 24 hours. We'll pray for strength. We'll pray for whatever it is we need to take care of these things in a sane, sound manner. We ask especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. 
We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us have wasted a lot of time doing that, and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. We are never to pray for our own selfish ends. Never. Letting us know that um, in our third step prayer, once again, this this agreement we made. Somebody told me to use that term. It's a better term than contract. This agreement we made was take away my difficulties. That victory over them would bear witness to those I would help. Okay. Thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. So we're going to pray for ourselves if it helps others. <clears throat> if circumstances warrant, we ask our wives and our friends to join us in morning meditation. If we belong to a religious denomination which requires a definite morning devotion, we attend to that also. Look at this. That also. It doesn't mean skip all of this and go run to your uh, ashram or go run to your church and go do your morning devotion. It says we attend to that also, above and beyond what they are telling us to do. If not members of a religious body, we sometimes select and memorize a few set prayers, which emphasize the principles we have been discussing. There are many helpful books also. Suggestions about these may be obtained from one's priest, minister, or rabbi. Be quick to see where religious people are right. Make use of what they offer. Okay, this is where people will take will, will take me and say, Well, Lonnie, you have to grow. You can't just do you can't just do the basics and stay sober. Yes, we can. It says if we're not members of a religious body, we can select and memorize. A few set prayers so that we can pray before we begin our day, so that we can think about our day, so that we can pray after we think about our day, so that we can pray after our nightly inventory and we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures. There's many books, man, that discuss the principles. They emphasize the principles we have discussing. If my prayer life above and beyond what the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is telling me is not helping me do a third step. It's not helping me do steps four, five, six, and seven. It's not helping me do eight and nine. Then I'm in spiritual make-believe. These are the principles we have been discussing. These are the principles that Alcoholics Anonymous wants me to practice on a daily basis so that I can maintain and grow in this relationship with God. Once again, not knocking what we do above and beyond, okay? If we belong to other spiritual activities, fifth edition will probably change this word. If we belong to other things, if we want to do other things, perfectly acceptable, guys, perfectly acceptable. But let's not forget what the book is asking us to do. It gave us clear-cut directions on how to meditate. And these other things that we seek, hopefully they emphasize the principles, the previous steps we have been discussing. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the right thought or action. However you do that, that's how you do that. It's not rocket science for me to pause. That's it. I don't have to run to the chapel and get prostrate. I can pause. And I ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show. Constantly reminding ourselves. That's that third step. Constantly reminding ourselves we're no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. So as we go through the day, I'm getting aggravated. I'm getting irritated. I'm going to pause 
ask for the right action. I'm going to do this 10 step on the fly. I've been practicing it and we can do our 10 step on the fly. We can go through four through nine quickly in our minds. Okay, we're then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily for we are not burning up foolish energy when, as we were when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. Once again, reminding us we are no longer running the show. We have a voice. We have an opinion. We have some good thoughts, right? But the outcomes of those is not up to us. We're not running the show. I'm trying to find my role, my job, and do that. It works. It really does. We are out. We alcoholics are undisciplined, so we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. This is how we are going to get discipline. This is how our character defects will be removed. This is how we put everything together that we have learned since step one. We are now putting it into daily practice. On pages 84, starting with our 10th step, as we continue to do our amends, we're going to do our 10th step. We're going to follow these definite and valuable suggestions. We're going to do our nightly inventory. On awakening, we're going to pray. We're going to think about the 24 hours ahead. We're going to pray. If we have other devotions we want to do, Excellent. Most beautiful. And hopefully these other devotions we're doing are reinforcing everything we learned so far. As I go through the day, if I'm agitated, I'm going to pause. I'm going to whip a 10 step on it. We alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in the way we have just outlined. And that, my friends, is the spirituality of Alcoholics Anonymous. But this is not all. There's action and more action. Oh, goodness, more action. Faith without works is dead. It's not a thinking program. It's not a meditating program. It's not a prayer program. This is a spiritual program of action. The next chapter is entirely devoted to step 12. Awesome, guys. I'm a little bit over time here. So we're going to get into chapter seven, working with others. And I'll probably have to break that one down into 12 different 20-minute uh, segments. So I hope you guys can uh, hang in there. But congratulations, man. And, and like I said before, I really appreciate you guys watching. It's given me some encouragement. Uh, in my times I'm going through right now, I'm going through some hard times with some illnesses. So I do have the time to do this and I really appreciate it. And I want to say hello to my friend that has such anxiety that she cannot get to AA meetings. Even online, she has a hard time sharing. That was the main reason for starting these videos. And I just pray she's getting a lot out of it. Okay, people. God bless y'all, and until next time, take it easy. Bye.